In all you're getting, get wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Through wisdom is a house built. And by understanding, it is established. Join, Join Apostle, Apostle Joshua Selman, Selman of Eternity Network, Network International as he takes you on a journey into the wisdom of God's Word. It's intimacy. It's partnership. It's fellowship. This is Koinonia. Let's lift our hands and give him all the praise. Jesus, we bless you for tonight. Let the name of the Lord be exalted. To be a night of encounter, night of lifting. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. It is unto you that we are gathered tonight. Let your name be glorified. Hallelujah. Pray one prayer. Lord, visit me tonight. Take me to another dimension. Are you praying? Visit me. Take me to another dimension tonight. My heart is open. within your power to ask it is within his power to release fresh grace fresh wisdom hallelujah father tonight we are gathered thousands and thousands of people all across the nations of the earth waiting, hungry, expectant, ready to receive. And Lord, we thank you because it is within your power to give us fresh encounters, fresh dimensions for our ministries, for our businesses, for our lives. Lord, we pray that you spare not your hand tonight. Let your outstretched hand be made mighty in our midst. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Let every life and every destiny receive a touch. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. Good evening everyone. It's good to have us around again. Um, Pastor Luca, God bless you. I appreciate a very dear friend all the way from Joss. Thank you. Thank you so much. Medical doctor and a great man of God doing a mighty work in Joss. Tonight the Lord will bless us in remarkable ways in Jesus' name. Um, I will just perform a function very quickly. Um, The Lord bless the Meshach Alpha family with a bouncing baby boy. Hallelujah. May men clap for you the way you are clapping now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So very quickly, in one minute, we'll dedicate the child unto the Lord, to the glory of God. Please let me invite... Um, Pastor Alpha and his lovely wife. Let's honor them. Praise the Lord. See her looking as if um, it was someone else who gave birth. Ladies, if I were you, I was so into that kind of anointing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One more time, let's appreciate them. will be very brief Luke Luke chapter Luke chapter 2 please quickly Luke chapter 2 we are blessing the Lord you see dedication listen carefully I want you to learn something dedication 
is an act of humility by the parents of any child when you bring a child to God you are acknowledging that regardless of your sense of responsibility regardless of your financial capability the vicissitudes of life uh, and the factors that need to synergize themselves together to make a child become a responsible man is not absolutely within your control so when you come to hand over a child to God it's not religion unfortunately we make a lot of religion out of it but it is a declaration by the father and the mother that Lord we are handing this child over to you you gave us this child as a loan and we are wise enough to hand over this child you see that Luke chapter 2 and we'll read a few verses we are reading from verse um, 22 down to the last verse but then we'll be jumping them when the days of our purification talking about Moses now according to the law of Moses were accomplished they brought him to where? Jerusalem to do what? to present him not before a man of God not before a church before the Lord 23 okay let's go to 24 please so we can hurry up and to offer sacrifice according to that which was said in the law of Moses a pair of this and that and that and that and that next verse quickly and behold there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon the same man was just and devout waiting for the consolation of Israel read on it says give it to us 26 please okay and it was revealed to him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord Jesus Christ I want to show you two things that happened and he came by the spirit how did he come not by the will of man not by the traditions of a church he came by the spirit into the temple and when the parents dedication except one of the parents are dead you don't dedicate a child with the father alone or the mother alone according to scripture the parents must be there acknowledging together it took two of them to bring that child there and it's going to take two of them to hand over the child to the Lord are we learning now it says to do for him after the custom of the law read on let's hurry up and he took him up by his arms and blessed God and said Lord now let your servant depart in peace according to your word for mine eyes have seen a child what did he call the child what did he call the child that means dedication is the place where the prophetic destiny of children are unraveled he didn't call him Jesus he said my eyes have seen what you call a little baby now but I see the salvation of Israel which thou hast prepared before the face of all people uh -huh. a light to the Gentiles this is a man prophesying on Jesus and the glory of thy people Israel 33 and Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him we are reading down to 40 and Simeon blessed them so he did not just bless the child he empowered the parents to be able to help the child become all that God destined him to be and he said to Mary his mother behold this child is set for the fall and the rising of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against yeah a sword okay that that let's go to Anna the prophetess now next verse the Bible tells us that there was one Anna a prophetess the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher the Bible says she was of great age 38 please and she coming into that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for the redemption the redemption in Jerusalem 39 and when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord they returned to Galilee to their own city the last verse and this is the result of that dedication because of what happened in the temple certain things became possible what became possible read on Christians and the child grew and then was strong in spirit filled with what and what happened great grace was upon him this became the experience of that child because the parents 
were able to hand him over. Are we together? Pastor Alpha and his lovely wife have brought their child before the Lord to hand over and say, Lord, you are the only one who can take care of this child. I can buy him drugs, but I cannot give him life. I can cover his head, but I may not be able to cover his destiny in my strength. I can give him food, but I cannot keep him healthy. Are we together now? It's an acknowledgement. A handover. And we're going to pray. I want us to stretch our hands. I may not have to hold the baby. Just, just hold the baby yourself. Father, hold the baby. Let's stretch our hands over this child and speak in one minute. Set for the rising of many, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we honor this child. We bless him. When the wise men came, they saw a baby, yet they bowed down to him. We declare that kings, nations will bow down to this child. We command that this child, like Jesus, will grow and work strong in spirit, will be full of wisdom and great grace upon him. The diseases that destroy children will not destroy him. We place upon him the mystery of exemption. In the name of Jesus Christ, this child is a proper child and he will grow well. In the name of Jesus Christ, when he reaches an age of discretion, he will hand over his life willingly to Jesus and remain in the faith all through his life. The fullness of his days he will fulfill. I empower you, Pastor Alpha, and your lovely wife, and I decree and declare to you that the grace, the resources, the wisdom it will take to raise this child, I pray that it be supplied you in the name of Jesus. That everyone who looks upon this child will favor you. Whoever means evil for this child, we declare him uncursable. Whoever speaks against him in the name of Jesus, the earth will fight them. We bless this child in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The name of the child is David Egahi Ojo Omokorede Meshach Alpha. Um, the parents will tell us which one we are going to use to identify the child, but this, these are the names. I, I read it one more time. E David Egahi Ojo Omokorede Meshach Alpha. David, we bless you in the name of Jesus. We declare that it is well with you. We decree and declare that when men are cast down for you, it will be a lifting up. And in the name of Jesus, by the election of grace, I lay my hands upon this child. And we dedicate him in the presence of God's people, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. He remains dedicated unto the Lord, in the name of Jesus. Congratulations. I'm acknowledging you for... Help me. I don't know how to sing it. Celebrate with them just for one minute. Um, we always issue a certificate. This is a beautiful certificate. Um, so that when the child grows up, he will know that he was handed over to the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the Father, in the name of Jesus, I hand this over to you. Let me shake you. My hands are busy. But in the name of Jesus Christ, let it be a token of this child's dedication. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Pastor Alpha, congratulations. My dear, congratulations. Young man, congratulations for having a younger brother. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please return back to your seat. I know many of us who want to sow into their lives, celebrate with them further. After service, they will be somewhere waiting for you. Do well to celebrate with them and the Lord will honor you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's get to the business of tonight. Holy Spirit Part 3. The Holy Spirit Part 3. Jesus, we bless you.
And tonight we are going to be looking at the ministry of the Spirit. We started off looking at um, the person of the Holy Spirit. You know, different kinds of encounters with the Holy Spirit. And then we looked at the ministry of the Holy Spirit last week. Or the last time we discussed this. And today we are looking at the ministry of the Spirit. We are looking at how a man can operate in fellowship and partnership with the Holy Spirit. The ministry of the Holy Spirit defines his activities in the life of a man. But the ministry of the Spirit is a communication of how a man can partner with the Holy Spirit to do wonders in the earth. For our reference tonight, I want us to look at Mark chapter 16, please. Mark chapter 16. The Gospel of Mark chapter 16. Verse 20. Mark 16 verse 20. Let's read together. It's projected. One to read. And they went forth uh -huh, and preached everywhere. Read on. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. The Lord walking with them. Not just going ahead of them. It was the signs that followed them. But the Lord walking with them. I told us that there is a dimension of the Holy Spirit in you. Are we together now? But when you want to begin to describe the ministry of partnership with the Holy Spirit. It's not just the Holy Spirit in you. The name Alos Paracletos, when you read the, the epistle of John from 14, 15, 16. He says, and the comforter whom the Father will send in my name. You know, he began to introduce us. The word, the Greek word is Alos Paracletos. One who is sent to continue what someone else was doing. So the Holy Spirit, um, as we discussed the last time, is on earth today as an extension, a continuation. That everything that Jesus Christ was to the disciples who would later be apostles, he is to the church today. Are we together now? The last time we agreed that the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to creation, to unbelievers, to believers. At any given point in your life, you need the Holy Spirit. As an unbeliever, you need Him to furnish the reality of the Christ in you. And to plant in you conviction. You can't get convicted by yourself. It takes the ministry of the Holy Spirit. As a believer, we discussed extensively the last time several things that the Holy Spirit would do in our lives, activating your spiritual senses, revelation and understanding of Scripture, guidance and direction, renewal and transformation, birthing in you the fruit of the Spirit, and um, empowerment and, and so on and so forth. But the Bible says the Lord walking with them. They were moving doing all that they were asked to do but there was an invisible personality listen carefully working with them and his assignment in that context was to confirm that means to force things to comply to force things to comply to ensure that the word of the lord upon their lips notice the bible never said confirming their word no they spoke it but it was the word of God confirming the word with signs. All kinds of diverse miracles, signs and wonders. Now, you would see Peter, you would see John, James moving alone. And you would see supernatural possibilities. Possibilities that cannot be affordable to the natural man. And the Bible gives us a mystery behind it. It says that there is one walking with them. Can I use you, Holy Spirit? Walking with them. Now you imagine for one minute that I'm walking with this guy and um, as limited as I may seem, my partnership with this gentleman is affording me certain possibilities. For instance, if I'm supposed to lift this and it's a bit difficult for me, I can't lift it with one hand and assuming I have only one hand, then you will see another, don't lift it, just touch it. You'll see an invisible hand. You are seeing only one person holding this, but you are seeing the results of two people. It says, the Lord walking with them. Are we together now? Walking with them. So, when it was time for Peter, in Acts chapter 3, 4, right? 
to lift that guy at the beautiful gate. It was just Peter and John, you thought. But it was Peter, John, and the Spirit of the living God. When Peter held the hands of that man, there were two people holding his hands. It's only that one is visible. And that's the one you see. And he lifted him. Listen, I want to teach you the mystery behind the strange results of many people. You see ordinary men, but results that are superhuman. Results that are beyond the scope of men. I was so blessed by the testimonies of the wonderful people. And those testimonies are signs. They are proof that you are not alone. Hmm. Are we together now? It's one thing to be aware that the Holy Spirit is available. It's one thing to even receive Him. But it's another thing to walk with Him. Walking with the Holy Spirit is an entire aspect of the believer's life. There are many people filled with the Holy Spirit, born again, but they have not mastered the art of partnership. Let me show you a scripture. I found this scripture and it blessed me so much. Isaiah 48. Thank you. You'll come back shortly. Isaiah 48 verse 16. Isaiah 48 verse 16. I want us to read it. It's projected. Want to read. Come near unto me. Hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was. And there am I. Now I want you to read this. Is the part I want us to read together. One, two, read. And now the Lord God and His Spirit has sent me. Who sent you? The Lord God and His Spirit. Other version says the Lord God alongside His Spirit. That means the Lord did not send you alone. He sent you and attached the Holy Spirit. Like I would send you to the bank. Um, well, it's not a good analogy. But let's, let's just assume I would send you to the bank and give you an ATM machine. That ATM machine is what will give you the capacity to be able to withdraw money. You can go to the bank on your own. You can stand before the machine. But you need another agency outside of you. This is the mysterious yet simple reason, <laughs> result. Um, um, uh, how do I put it now? Um, um, factor, that's the word I'm looking for. Behind the results, the mysterious results of people. You're looking at Koinonia for instance, and you're seeing amazing things. That's why we say it is by the Spirit. By the Spirit. It's only in partnership with the Holy Spirit that certain things can be done. Listen human beings are limited it's a revelation i want you to get used to no matter how intelligent no matter how educated no matter how civilized there is only so much the three-dimensional realm can afford you it takes an understanding that your victory and my victory your triumph and my triumph in life is exclusively non-negotiably a product of my partnership with the Holy Spirit. Understanding Him, His ministry, and learning how to align. And then you will produce wonders. Wonders that will shock you. Jesus Himself. The Bible tells us that when Jesus walked upon the earth, for 30 years, ladies and gentlemen, His life was as ordinary as anything. The living logos. The Word of God. We never saw Him prophesying to anyone, doing anything. No, he was just in the temple learning like any other student. Nothing ordinary, extraordinary about his life. And then the Bible tells us that one time he went and saw John baptizing people. And when he was baptized, watch this, the heavens became open over him and a voice spoke. This is my beloved son, etc., etc. Then the Bible says the Holy Spirit drove him to the wilderness. And he fasted for 40 days and so on and so forth. Satan tempted him. And afterwards, the Bible says he returned in the power of the Spirit. The next time we hear of Jesus Christ, he's turning a city upside down. The next time we hear of Jesus cripples, the dead rising, the sea, the elements of creation obeying him. And they asked Jesus what the secret was and he was not ashamed. Listen, 
listen carefully jesus himself revealed to us a very deep secret in john chapter 15 john 15 please give it to us john 15 john chapter 15 my hell you most high i am the true vine and my father is the husband man so we are seeing that there is a participation of multiple people the results that we saw in the life of jesus so in the life of the early church jesus is telling us that this is not just a one-man show some are visible some are invisible but there are forces there are personalities working together to make this thing happen verse 2 every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away so branch in me branch in me that means he is different from the branch he said i am the vine you look at a tree but there are specifications all of them are not doing the same thing there is one responsible for producing the fruit there is one responsible for making sure the branch is healthy this is called partnership it's called partnership a participation a distribution of assignment like a husband and a wife he supplies money take 10,000 naira and he sits down happily in the parlor you would think he's irresponsible but he has played his part and the wife goes to the market buying all kinds of things and goes to the kitchen and you see her working so hard you will think the man is wicked wait until it's now time for the child's school fees you see the woman singing praises in the morning while he's calculating how to raise the money partnership and love is so powerful that sometimes they help themselves ah this is where the mercy of god comes in there are times that the the woman may be incapacitated and the man says look i know that it is your role to work in the kitchen but i love you so much we are a team if you fail i still fail so i can come into the kitchen that's why you see the holy spirit sometimes can move even beyond the jurisdiction of his work and step into your life and you see things you know that you did not finish keeping the principles that should produce the results but he came in spirit of god are you learning something now the lord and his spirit has sent me how many people in this world you see people say i'm alone i don't even know what is happening that statement is a product of ignorance listen very carefully that statement hear me please it's a product of ignorance it looks like a well-meaning lamentation over the vicissitudes of life but that is a communication it's an embarrassment it's a every time you act helpless you make the holy spirit look irresponsible listen um let me use a lady to sing come watch this now we are going maybe to the market and there is a distribution of work and i'm saying tosin work with me you are going to help me make some purchases are we together now now look at this please if we get to the market and let's say we are going to buy a cow and we stand and there are several cows they check the cows and we find out that these cows are healthy cows we are ready to buy it and all of a sudden tosin is shaking are we together are you following my, my example? Tosin is shaking. And then the people are asking her, Madam, why are you shaking? And he says, huh, I, I just hope that we'll be able to buy this cow. Who, is, who will take the shame? I'm standing there as a responsible personality. I was the one who asked her to go and buy a cow. It was not her opinion. Are we together now? And I'm standing. And only because they said the cow is 150,000, she's shaking. Two things will cause that one she does not know me or number two is an act of rebellion she has done something that makes her perceive that my partnership has been cut away now fear is as a result of her consciousness that she's not holding the money in her hands it doesn't matter who holds the money the most important thing is let payment be made you see why we have a lot of fear oh god you are leading me to do certain things but lord based on what i have there are things god does not give you it is your partnership with him he is the one who does the payment but the flesh wants to hold the money by yourself 
Lord, I want to be, let it be that the anointing is like a charm. If there is an anointing, where is it? That's why we like oil. That's why we like things we can hold. And the Holy Spirit says, this journey is by faith. If you are going to pray for the sick, there is nothing on your hand. You are going to have to believe that I'm there. Partnership. Let me tell you, this is my mindset. I never walk alone. You hear all of those results? Human beings cannot produce it. No. Not with the, the stringent academic um, system that we have. No, sir. So she's standing, unable to pay, and I am more than enough to buy the whole cows there. Are we together? But she has a price. There's a, there's a role that she has to play. And this lady can be shaking there, embarrass me, and then without consulting me, she can tell the cow seller, sorry, we accept an embarrassment we came here to disgrace ourselves it is not within our power and she reverses the interesting thing about the holy spirit is he's so gentle he will follow you so your limitation is not his limitation your limitation is your inaccurate understanding of the resources that are resident within him you are only looking at what you have listen 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 the greatest dimension of the faith work of a believer is not to receive things, is to walk with the Spirit. You will not always receive. There are things that will remain with Him, but He will walk, He will be the doer. You see, this receiving is a nice thing and there is a dimension to it, but most of this sense of reception is a communication of unbelief. We just want to be in control. It's our obsession for control. Lord, now that um, you are sending me to this place, how am I sure that you are going to help me? Father, let somebody send me an alert now. Let me know I have my transport fare going and coming and the money to rent the venue. And God will say, no, we are together in this. He said, God, I love you, but um, you are not the one who will pay the rent. You see, we make those kind of stupid statements. Lord, I want an alert. Watch this. If you get an alert now, then you are happy. And he said, Lord, let's go. And he says, no. It's difficult for me to take glory now because the alert is already in your... The miracle is not your receiving the alert. The miracle is walking with him. Entering a city where nobody knows you. And you say, Shibra Kataya, the Spirit of God. We are in this place. And all of a sudden, your trust puts pressure on him. And a stranger comes from nowhere. And says, sorry, it looks like you are... What is the issue? And he said, well, um, I'm just coming here. He said, what's your name? Are you Sam? I had a dream last night. And I saw you. Are you the one? That's how he's glorified. So while you were sleeping... The other part of the equation, the Spirit of God was already making arrangements. That He did not inform you does not mean He did not do it. This is where our unbelief is. We always want God to give us all the details before we trust Him. No, the mission is follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Lord, you are sending me to Zamfara. What, how, are we, how are we going to do this? You must give me the details. When will I marry? How many children will I have? Will it be a girl or boy? Show me everything first. And God says, me? I created the heavens and the earth. I left a compendium of my integrity to convince you that I am able. Will I disgrace myself just because of you? And we say, Lord, keep talking. All I know is that if I don't see it and handle it, If you pay attention to what I'm sharing with you today, your life will be a wonder. Yes. Because when people look at you, they are only looking at the smallest part of the equation. Yonggi Cho calls him my senior partner. We are partners in this, but I'm not alone. So where you see me physically weak, there is a mighty invisible force standing to back me. You want to kill me, you kill both of us. You see that? 
You want to curse me, you curse both of us. I agree that I can fail on my own, but with God, with Him, with Him, quarter to failure, He will appear and manipulate the equation. And you know that, no, 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 no. Based on what this brother did, you are supposed to fail. But with the introduction of this personality, he will alter everything. Change everything. Believers, the partnership with the Holy Spirit is not for men of God. The partnership, the ministry of the Spirit, I will tell you what it is shortly. But the partnership with the Holy Spirit is not some kind of thing for preachers. So many people say, wow, this guy is called into the miracle ministry. Why not? So you go ahead and try to know the Holy Spirit. No. The Holy Spirit was sent, listen to me carefully, as a strengthener, as a comforter, as an advocate, the revealer of secrets. He said, then the secret was revealed to Daniel. Until it was revealed, he did not know. Cheap battles. We have lost cheap battles in life because we've been fighting alone. Our parents have been fighting alone. They are still fighting alone. That's why people carry their certificates and say, no, no, based on this certificate, it must be. And then when they are coming to God for help, they don't just say, God, come and help me. They say, God, see, I'm a graduate. So use it. And God says, please, when I want to move, you don't tell me how to move. Your job is to believe that I move. Don't hold a certificate and think that is the basis of me blessing you. Lord, I have seven children. They are all useless. Use them to bless me. And God says, uh-uh. I can save your children and lift your children. But if I want to bless you, it has nothing to do with using your children. I can use anybody, including your enemy. The ministry of the Spirit. And the Lord walking with Joshua Selman and the Lord walking with Koinonia producing results that you know are not human producing results you know defy the wisdom of men whenever you see an extraordinary manifestation of wisdom it's not just by studying no the Holy Spirit you can have knowledge but to create changes, it takes power. It takes the introduction of someone else that is not you. Someone once asked me a question, a man of God. He asked me a question and he said, Man of God, how do you gather supposedly the best of everything? How do you get worshippers that are so nice? protocol people that are so nice is it that you apply is it that you do this and i laugh i i tell him do you think i have the power in myself to vet people and know don't forget that we are not alone spirit of god he knows how to draw them the same way he knows where your destiny helper is the same way he knows your geographic location but the trouble is this our unbelief this our unbelief we must listen we must walk this thing tonight to say lord i trust you and i believe in you he said but i know whom i have believed in and i am persuaded that he is able i am persuaded that he is able i'm persuaded that he is able i wish we had time and I, I allowed Pastor Alpha and his lovely wife to share with you the testimony of their child. How this lady gave birth. It was a, there were supernatural things that happened. He shared with me a bit of it. Let me just share one of it if you permit me, Pastor. There was a time the baby, it was like the baby was too big. Brothers and sisters, she pushed twice. The baby came out. They measured him a few minutes later on. And his weight, am I right? His weight had increased. Shrunk came out and increased back that's not a man you can get pregnant you can't shrink a baby it takes someone else with you this consciousness of not being alone this consciousness of not being alone our carnality our our sensuality is what makes us feel because i'm alone i don't see anybody that means there is no help 
No. He said, I will lift up my eyes, listen, unto the hills. And he said, from whence cometh my help? He said, my help comes from the maker, the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. I will not leave you comfortless. Don't act comfortless. Jesus said it. I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you comfortless. Apostle, you don't understand my situation. My father is late. My mother is late. I sympathize with you. But brothers and sisters, if you knew what the Holy Spirit could do in your life, if only you recognize His presence and give Him room. Give Him room. The Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit. He will not bump into your life. When you make the Holy Spirit the chief influencer of your decisions, you will be amazed at the miraculous things that will come from your mind. What is the ministry of the Spirit? Write this down. I'm preaching this with all passion in my heart because this is one of the biggest secrets of my life. Listen. Listen. The Bible says, it is not good for man to be alone. I know we talk of marriage. This is marriage is a marriage is a borrowed is a borrowed phenomenon to represent something spiritual. It is not good. In other words, man cannot be effective alone. I will make a help suitable. Suitable. In other words, there are potentials in man. But all by himself, there are things he cannot do. So I will make a help. So when Jesus sent the Holy Spirit as a helper, it's because he knows. The Bible says, we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He knows he will face financial troubles. He knows that your health will be challenged. He knows there are forces in the earth. He knows that the world we live in is so unfair unfair and he left us his spirit the ministry of the spirit is a revelation the ministry of the spirit are you writing is a revelation on how a believer through fellowship and partnership a revelation on how a believer through fellowship and partnership with the Holy Spirit will produce extraordinary results will produce extraordinary results giving glory to God a revelation of how a believer, an ordinary person, an ordinary villager, an ordinary uneducated person, an ordinary orphan, an ordinary widow, an ordinary widower, an ordinary third class graduate can come into partnership and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And they two together, always, will produce extraordinary results. Results that defy science. Defy logic. Listen. You've heard me say it here. It has become an anthem. That when it is, listen, when it is the doing of man, it is ordinary and relatable. But when it becomes the Lord's doing, it becomes marvelous in our eyes. When your career is just the normal pathway every graduate takes. There is nothing worthy of applause. But when it becomes extraordinary and supernatural, then it is marvelous. And listen, John chapter 15, give us verse 8, please. Let me show you how God takes glory. John 15 and verse 8. Let's read. One, two, read. Hearing this is how my father is glorified read on that ye bear what 
that ye produce results. Everybody say results. Shout it please. Results. Listen, listen, listen. The earth only responds to one language. Results. Results. The end of your confession, the end of your jumping, falling around, the end of whatever is to be able to produce results that men can recognize. It is only through the results that men can see. It's a demonstration of the might of God. It is results that makes you a witness. It is results that makes you an ambassador. You are promoting the interests of a man and you have proofs for it. Are we together now? When your life is barren of results, especially extraordinary results, God cannot be glorified. It's impossible for God to be glorified. There is a statement that he wants to use your life to make to principalities and powers. And so he takes ordinary you. Ordinary you. I don't say that in a derogatory way. I know that we are in Christ. But you need to understand the dynamics. Every time we say we are in Christ, understand that we are the weaker part of the equation. It is His love that makes us and His grace that makes us together. It's not as if you are two, like two intelligent business partners. One has money. One is an IT guru. Then they come together. No. It is one totally weak, helpless failure. And another infinite personality coming into partnership. Are we together now? So, never mistaking the fact that when I talk of participation, I'm not talking of a participation that is something you would have done outside God. For without me, ye can do nothing. Your own participation is alignment through obedience. Alignment through obedience. That's all you are required to do. That's your part of the equation. In your walk with the Spirit, there is only one assignment as far as partnership is concerned. It's called alignment through obedience. Alignment. You align to Him. And that happens through obedience. Obedience is a summation of every principle, every law, every strategy, every dictate of God as revealed by His Word to commit God to your affairs. It's called obedience. Having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. The ministry of the Spirit. How many preachers today pray in tongues, jump up and down, believe they are filled with the Holy Spirit, but they don't walk with the Holy Spirit. They go for programs alone. They even pray in tongues. To be filled with the Holy Spirit is not the same as walking with the Spirit. You are walking with the consciousness of partnership with Him. I'm standing on this stage. You are only seeing one man. Are we together now? But there are two people. You are hearing one voice. But there is an invisible power behind that voice that will produce conviction. Are we together? So, I look at someone and I prophesy to you and say in the name of Jesus, may your life change. Can a man tell you that kind of thing? You too, you, I mean you are intelligent. Can a man talk to you and change your life? No. You are HIV positive. Go and become negative. Just like that. What pride without the Holy Spirit? Who gave you that audacity? The centurion got it right. For I am a man in partnership with an authority. And based on that partnership, I say to one, go. And he goes. I say to one, come. And he comes. Jesus, I know that you are standing here. You are a 33-year-old body. But mysteriously, there is an ancient spirit working in you. And Jesus said, I've not found this faith, this understanding. No, not in Israel. That ordinary men can walk with an ancient spirit and produce results that are bigger than them. You see ordinary men, but you see God's results. Let me show you the partnership of the spirit. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. As a result, I shall not want. He says, He makes me to lie down. I can refuse. But my own partnership is compliance. 
to lie down in green pastures he restores my soul he guides me he never forces me he guides me guides me the first the first proof that you are walking with the holy spirit is your submission to his leadership the first proof that you are walking with the spirit write it down submission to his leadership where his leadership is not an opinion where his leadership is not a discussion you don't do things the way you want to do there is an influence submission to his leadership and thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it you can choose to refuse you can choose to argue look at me the first proof that a man is walking by the spirit is total submission to the leadership of the holy spirit lord if it be possible let this cup pass nevertheless not my will but thy will submission to the leadership of the holy spirit knowing that the holy spirit is god and according to jeremiah 29 11 it says for i know the thoughts that i think towards you say the lord listen carefully they are thoughts of good or peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end that means i can be led of the spirit i do not even know but i believe by faith i've taught you something about the leadership of the holy spirit let me reiterate on it watch this let me use someone come please if this guy believes with all his heart that he is being led by the spirit or led of the spirit watch this if this guy believes that he's led of the spirit are we together and this is where the holy spirit wants him to go to but he takes a step this direction and he's doing it innocently with all sincerity believing he's led of the holy spirit the spirit of god will take the door and put it here to make sure he passes right this is the mysterious thing about working with god perfection is not a requirement sincerity is the sincerity of your heart <laughs> So, it's, it's, not, it's not the issue of perfection of hearing God. Perfection, oh God. No, 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 no. You will make so many mistakes trying to discern His voice. But regardless of it, His integrity is committed to making sure you get to the place of destiny. This is our consolation. There are many times Paul wrote certain things and said, I speak as a man. This is my opinion. It's not that the Holy Ghost gave me any understanding. This is my opinion. Yet, all together, the Bible says all scriptures were inspired. How many? Including what Paul was saying, an opinion of a man. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me. To the city of above, He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. One more time. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Listen. Every time God speaks to you about your destiny. He speaks to you as if he's talking to himself. It will be so big. God will tell you white men will come. You are going to take over Europe. And you are watching little you. And you are saying, God, don't mock me. Don't mock me. How shall these things be, Mary said, seeing that I know not a man. And the angel said, you have asked a good question. It will not happen just because you have a womb. The power of the highest. There is a provision. I'm just giving you the information so that you will align. But it won't be only you. I will call you into a healing ministry. Oh Lord, I have never healed a headache. Don't worry. Your job is to believe. For when he comes, then you will see wonders. Wonders. Listen, this is what God told me many years ago. 
Yes. To walk with Him. The Holy Spirit was introduced to me in a very strange way. I've shared a few of those, those, those stories with you people. I wish I had time. I would have shared with you my encounters with the Holy Spirit. Just a little, naive, young, innocent boy moving around. And the Holy Spirit came like a guy who is looking for a wife. Ah, he comes to propose to you. Joshua Selman, can you walk with me and I turn you into a wonder? And all your unbelief says, uh-uh. Based on what the newspaper and the history books told us, you have to do A, B, C, D. There must be an uncle in civil defense, an auntie in CBN. Then when you add that equation, is equal to success. And this stranger comes to you that you have never met. And he says, walk with me. Like a gentleman will come and hold a lady's hands and say, I want to marry you. It's a risk. Is that true? And he says, just believe me. I don't look like it now, but there are all kinds of potentials. And that lady takes a risk and they begin the journey. The journey of destiny. Ten years later, she is the wife of the person with the largest company in the whole world. And you admire her. No! Admire her risk. Admire the sacrifice. Admire that step of faith that even when she did not understand, many people see what God has done in our lives today and they say, Apostle, you are lucky. No, I'm not lucky. No, I'm not lucky. No, I'm not lucky. It's better to even say, I'm a benefactor of God's grace, not luck. Where were you in the night when he came to me and said, Son, trust me. When he was speaking to me, you were not there. The same way God is telling some of us, you may have come from a village. You are the last born. You can't speak English. But just trust me and let me make a wonder out of you. And many of us are saying, oh God, it can't work that way. Partnership. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, He doesn't ask you your age. He doesn't ask you your gender. He doesn't ask you your education. He doesn't ask you how many hours of prayer. He doesn't ask you what revelation you know. Because all of those things are seeds. They will still die. No matter what the accomplishment is. When a seed is big or small, it will still die. When he comes, he says, look, I want you to trust me. And let's walk together. Then he will begin to guide you. He will destabilize your life into nonsense. Because your plans, your dreams, your hopes, everything scatters. You think you are confused, but he's leading you. All of a sudden, brothers and sisters, one more step and you are into a life of beauty and glory. Oh Lord, my plan was to marry that lady. My plan was to marry that guy. Why have you been stopping every brother coming? And God says, just keep walking with me. When we arrive there, you will look back and all the glory will be to him. There are businessmen who have held his hands. Naive, ignorant people. They know nothing about business. Nothing about finances. Come, they came from families that no destiny, no future. Full of all kinds of causes. And in their frustration, he came to them. And he said, can you trust me? And they said, Lord, I don't have much. Oh. He says, no problem. I'm not asking you for much. Just give me your hands. Give me your hands. <laughs> ah! And he will hold you step by step. I remember when we were about to start Koinonia. Where would you get a big venue? I saw these days in the vision. And I said, Lord, there's no auditorium I know that can take people. And I was praying. And there he came. Koinonia is not your ministry. Koinonia is my ministry. So let me guide you. You are only the physical representation that they can see. Like a manager of a company. But I am the owner. Let me guide you. And I saw in a vision CGC. How would I get the venue? The venue was small. But if he's leading you, he will shake men. He will raise donkeys. He will make stones speak. When he's leading you, he will move all kinds of things. The leadership. Many of us have been cheated in life because we have allowed over 
dependence on intellectualism to cheat us. We have robbed ourselves of the simplicity and the foolishness of following Him. Are we together? Yes. Brothers and sisters, listen. This battle is not your own. If you leave it to the right fighter, you will win. You have been fighting a battle you have not... Dis- you are not I-, I don't know, I'm prophesying to somebody. This battle is not your own. It will kill you on your own. It will kill you. It will kill you. That's the song. The battle isn't yours, but mine. The battle isn't yours, but mine. God is speaking. battle isn't yours, but mine. The battle is in yours. Oh God, I am 25 years. I am 27 years. How will I ever be established in this life? No uncle to help me. That's nonsense. That battle is not your own. You were not designed to be established by yourself. There is something that establishes men. Listen, believe me when I tell you I live a fearless life. I don't, live, I don't live a fearless life just because I am a macho man. I don't live a fearless life just because there's 10 naira in my pocket. I live a fearless... The day I discovered that I am never alone in the equation, I found rest. They got it very well. Find rest. Find rest. Look at this little boy, Pastor Alpha's son. He knows I have a responsibility to breathe and live. This man has a responsibility to feed me. For as long as I remain his son. Many of us have become God to ourselves. That's why we are being punished day and night. Many pastors are almost dying. How do I raise money for church? As if you are the one who sent yourself. How do I gather members? One pastor is about to leave me. Pastor, why do you want to leave me? All that is nonsense. When you realize that you are not alone. Say I'm not alone. Prophesy Say I'm not alone. Yes, and the Lord walking with them and the Lord writing exams with them and the Lord walking with them and the Lord building that house with them and the Lord doing that business with him and the Lord working on that job someone looks at you and says you'll be a failure in life you are going to fail I will make sure I frustrate you he's talking to two people he should know who the second person is. Frustrate who now? Because we are inseparable. Who are you going to frustrate? Me or the fountain of wisdom? So when you see people run, oh, somebody said he will kill me in the village. Somebody said I will never marry over her dead body. All of that is nonsense. It is your faith they are working on. And you believe it and receive it and your life begins to... There are many of us constantly requiring um, endorsement by people because we do not know that the Spirit of the Lord makes everybody a first-class personality. There are no second-class people with God. Submission to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you one big secret in my life. I never do anything until I hear God. Did you hear what I just told you? If God does not speak, I will not carry this speaker and leave it there. Now, the problem with many of us is we have been indoctrinated that God is always speaking. I respect those opinions. But based on the word of God and my experience, God does not always speak. He speaks, but He's not like a robot talking. In the fifth day of the tenth month of the tenth year, the word of the Lord came. 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 The patience of knowing that when his voice comes, what you call wasted time is rubbish. When his voice comes, it will bring you speed. Oh God, my colleagues have gone and left me. I've been a graduate for ten years. What are you doing with my life? Most of them have even built houses. Let his word come. When the Holy Spirit comes and says, Son, it's time. You will not walk. You will fly. Oh, no, 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 no. He does not give you progress. He lifts you. 
see this is why you see some people quiet and then all of a sudden in certain seasons they just explode and you look at them and you are like ah where did this guy come out from nobody comes out of nowhere it's a lie you just were not there during their times of dealings with the spirit if we launch a television station now all over the world for the next six months they'll say there's a channel koinonia tv my god come and see what is happening as though it just started no sir nobody just starts in on stage there is a track record of walking with the holy spirit that's why you see i acknowledge him so much so much when you see me talk about the holy spirit he can annoy you i'm not copying benny him no it's a revelation take away the holy spirit from my life you will be so embarrassed by what is left it will not be worth it take away the holy spirit from my life i'm not worth your attention take away the holy spirit from my life i'm not worth your confidence but with him Now you be God, Almighty God, for you know be my name. You know be my name. One more time. Now you be God, Almighty God, you know be my name. Do you know the meaning of what you just said? You don't use human strategies. You are not a man. When he comes to hold your hands, he's not going to do the Y, the X. He's not that dull. He's called the Spirit of God. My ways are not your ways. Neither are my thoughts your thoughts. For as far as the heaven is, when God comes, you expect Him to move you this way. And God says, let's start going back. And he said, Lord, the destination is there. He says, I know. Just go back. Ah, ah. Do you go back to go forward? You are just leading and you turn and you find out you are there. He, listen, he does not know the way. He is the way. It's not like he, he just leads you. He is the way. He said, I am the way. Have you learned to trust him? Show me what role he played in the decisions that you made. Show me what role he's playing now. Show me the role of the Holy Spirit in your financial decisions. Show me the role of the Holy Spirit in your relationships. Marital decisions. Show me the role of the Holy Spirit in your ministry. Show me the role of the Holy Spirit in your academics. Ask your parents. That's the secret behind the failure of many of our parents. We cannot see how he led them. Pride and arrogance. I went to school. I've done this. I've done that. And life whips them left, right and center. And then you find a dear poor woman in the village. Oh Lord, I may not be educated. I don't have much. I can't preach. But Lord, I just have a little boy. If you can use me, if you can use him, and God says, these are the kind of people I want. Ten years later, at age 10 or 11, that boy is already doing wonders. And the woman is there. 20 years, 30 years down the line, he's already celebrated all around the world. Because an innocent woman, listen, there is nothing in my work with God the, I know how to touch the heart of God. Let me tell you, surrender. That is the, is the best language of God in his dealings with men. Surrender. Lord, I can't do it. Lord, it is not in my power. I acknowledge you. That's music to his ears. I show you a secret to walking with the Spirit. Surrender. Surrender. Lord, I'm brilliant. Let me start. When I hook somewhere, I will employ you like a consultant and he watches you. Some of us have learned to die in his arms. When you see me worshipping God, I worship him like a fool. I will roll from end to end. Lord, what am I without you? Spirit of the living God, you are the mysterious wisdom behind what I do. 
when I was, I was, uh, I think it was yesterday night into this morning, I was just lying down and I said, Lord, imagine the mighty things you are going to be doing today. Healing people, blessing people. Imagine the thousands of people you are going to be gathering today. And the Lord told me something. As long as you keep walking with me, you will see my life in your life. My life in your life. That's what God told me this morning. For as long as you walk with me, you will see my life, not my hand. You see a man living, you know that this is another life. This is another result. That's why we keep going from glory to glory. That's why we keep going from dimension to dimension. That's why we never give credit to the flesh. Never give credit to the flesh. Now, the truth is men will clap for you. Men will say, wow, you are this, you are that. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will allow you. Don't stop them. Let them pat your back. But a wise person will go back and kneel down and say, Spirit of the living God, look what you've done with my life. This is the way you father me. I love the way you father me. This is the way you father me. I love the way you father me. This is the way you father me. I love the way you father me. This is the way you father me. I love the way you father me. Listen. I show you a fail-proof secret. Respect his voice. Respect his leadership. Whether it is comfortable to you or not, I just believe that the end is peace. Your mind is too small to understand the ways of God. I respect him. I've lost the ability to tell God no. If it is the voice of God and it's the direction of God, so be it. Ancient kings never went for war until they inquired. Haven't prepared the army. They will either use divination or prophets or priests. Let us know God's opinion. And God will say, go, I have given you victory. The moment he spoke, there was no fear again. Moses was confronted with several challenges. Notice how Moses will always retreat back to God. All right, nation of Israel, there is a Red Sea standing before us. I know what many of us would have done. Look, um, I'm an intelligent man. Just, just allow me. Uh, let me process this now. Moses said, all of you, calm down. Are you calm? They said, okay. He ran to God and said, God, what do I do? What do I do? Partnership. What do I do? Partnership. Remember, I said, if your presence will not go with me, I can't go. I don't want any embarrassment. And he said, look, Moses, don't be afraid. Stretch your rod. Tell the people to move forward. Moses has said, God, please, uh, can you just do something? Can you compress a cloud to become like a road? Let's use that strategy. How can you tell a man to go and part water? It's because it has happened. That's why you believe it. And all of a sudden, Moses went and, nation of Israel, let's start moving. And they looked at him and they said, you see, this idiot is back from wherever he went to he's back as stupid as always he said we should die instead of him to just say I don't have a solution he's now saying God said but there was the invisible part they didn't know the moment he stretched forth his rod signs and the Lord walking with Moses confirming the word with signs how about Joshua went round Jericho and they saw it. What is the strategy of God? How do we defeat a city whose fence can sit five chariots? The whole of CGC from here to here was still not the fence of Jericho. So even if the fence turned around, it will still be another fence. It sank. And God said, let me give you the strategy. Walk around once. Every once for seven days, the seventh day, move round seven times. And he went, foolish enough, and said, guys, I've gotten the strategy. They went round. I can imagine a nation of Israel. Listen, even if you are afraid, still obey. While you are complaining, be obeying. Lord, I don't think I understand, but let your legs keep taking you to the place of obedience. Faith is not fearlessness. 
faith is the resilience to obey him to the latter regardless of what you feel the ministry of the spirit submission to the leadership of the holy spirit number two the second dimension of the ministry of the holy spirit is walking in the might the power and the grace of the spirit walking in the might the power the grace of the spirit where it is not your strength again i can do all things philippians 4 13 through christ which strengtheneth me the word christ yes not just the person alone he's anointing the ministry of the spirit is a ministry where a man has been overshadowed by the power of the holy spirit where you begin to walk by another agency you are the one carrying out the physical activities but the energy the might the power the wisdom the strategy is not yours watch this if i lift this keyboard or i lift this on one hand it's understandable you look at me and feel i should have power enough as an adult to lift that is that true but when i gather these four people no don't I, I, you think i'm going to do that when i gather these four people and i hold them and you see me lift them you are going to say i have jazz you will attribute it to an advantage that is tied to the realm of the spirit because human beings should not do that when you see a man use his teeth to drag a car please be wise there are two people dragging that car when you see someone in the market square putting his head inside a hyena's mouth and he doesn't enjoy him you see people do it in the market or someone shoot an arrow or cut themselves with knife there are two people there are always two people a human and a spirit when you see an old woman say you must die there are two people talking the old woman who is the medium and the spirit speaking when you ever become alone on earth you will die it's always a ministry of truth you and the spirit of God and his power and his grace if you are not conscious of that oneness and you just drag yourself I want to go and pray for the sick. How many people have died of sickness because they thought it's just because the Bible said it. The Bible said it. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed. God's word said it. I believe it. It settles it. And you go and die because of ignorance. You just go and lay hands on somebody and all of a sudden carry what is upon that person and produce casualty in your life. There is a dynamics of the operation of the word. It starts with the Holy Spirit. It is his power that produces the results. When you speak, do you speak alone? Or are you just an echo of the real person speaking? John said, I am the voice of one crying. I'm not the word, but I am the voice. I allow that word to find expression. Brothers and sisters, this is the secret of this ministry you see. Operating under open heavens. The power of the spirit the might of the spirit john chapter 3 verse 1 nicodemus comes to jesus by night and then he says rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man here it is no man can do these things except god be with him except god be with him no man can become fulfilled in one year except God be with him. No man can defy all of these things except God be with him. Your results are ordinary. Although you look like you are filled with the Holy Spirit, although you are praying in tongues, but you have not come into the eternal consciousness of your oneness with him. Two people becoming one here's a statement that is made during marriage and it was god himself that made that statement therefore what god has joined let no man 
put that means only God can put asunder what God has joined who joined you and the Holy Spirit please help me so the principle is still applicable what God has joined that partnership with the Holy Spirit no man should be able to put asunder no charm should be able to put asunder no limitation should be able to put asunder because he was joined by God it's not an opinion of man your background notwithstanding when he supplies you power when he supplies you grace you activate possibilities in your life that cannot be done by a normal human being when he does something to your brain you will now see that four points five points is not something you should sit down and dream about it is a possibility that can happen when he anoints your hands then you now know that your hands may look ordinary but you can shake somebody and change his life forever when he anoints your words then you will know that speaking is not just about grammar there is a life that flows through it and produces results i know the smartest communicators around and they are unable to do much for the kingdom it takes more than speaking good english to drag people it takes an ability is working in me is working in me it's god's ability it's god's ability it's working in me it's working in me no matter how frail i look god's ability it's god's ability it's working in me it's working in me that's what the ability of God can do is the ability of God that has put us in over 45 nations of the world not been there never been on TV is an ability of the spirit is the ability of the spirit that has brought his breath upon our teachings that are changing people around the world is the ability of the spirit the miracles and the signs and the wonders the ability the crowds that you see gathered here there is no man walk around this city you are not going to see one coin on your poster the one billboard that was put was taken away it's making it's made no difference because you see brothers and sisters there is a force it's called an akazo. It's a compelling power. The power of the spirit that compels men into the will of God. That's the ability that will come upon you and drag destiny helpers to your life as if you are charming them. Yes. Yes. This is what God has done. Over 80% of the people who bless this ministry, I don't know them. I have never seen them with my eyes. I don't know how they got the ministry account details. Over 50% of, what am I saying, 50% of the people that bless me, I don't know them, I've never seen them, I don't know how they got my details. It's God's ability. When His power is upon your life, He will shock you. Shock you. They may see ordinary you. Ordinary you. But then there is an ability of the spirit he said there is this treasure listen carefully in earthen vessels that the excellency of power might be of god the ability of the spirit working in us acts chapter 19 please quickly i want us to find somewhere and begin to pray now acts chapter 19 we are reading 11 down to 20 but we'll jump some verses acts chapter 19 let's see what happened to a man when the power of the holy spirit was upon him it says and god who wrote the miracles please help me who wrote the miracles but who did the sick people see the sick people saw who paul but who was doing the miracles in koinonia who is doing the miracles 
but the one you can see is Joshua Selman. So you say, wow, this guy is powerful. You are not wrong. Except for the fact that when you come to me, I will redefine it and tell you, it's true Joshua Selman is powerful, but in Christ. And God wrought special miracles through the hands of Paul so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs and aprons and the disease departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. Are we together? Then talks about the sons of Sceva and what happened to them. Let's go to verse 16. It says, And the man in whom the evil spirit was left on them and overcame them and prevailed over them. Do you know why? Because they thought it was just about talking. Be healed. Be healed. When you see a man ministering by the spirit, it looks so easy. You can think it's so easy till you try it. That's what these guys did. No partnership with the Holy Spirit and they wanted God's result. And the demoniac pounced on them. 17. We're reading down to 20. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling in Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came. Look at this. Look at what the power of the Holy Spirit was doing. And confessed and showed their deeds. 19. And many of them which use curious acts, mantras and scientific books, books that they use with divination, those things became obsolete. Brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. Brothers and sisters, 50,000 anything is money. Are we together? Mm. 20. So mightily grew the word and prevailed so mightily grew how by the results that were communicated it takes power to produce the results that dumbfound men listen you can criticize but you cannot withdraw power no you can't withdraw it from careers of it this thing comes upon you and it's upon you and it remains for as long as you keep working with god it will only keep multiplying I wish I had time I would have shared with you. I've not even touched so much of the things that I want to share. But um, we'll find somewhere to stop tonight. No notable achievement in life is ever done by a man alone. It is always done by a man and a spirit. Either a demonic spirit or the spirit of the living God. There is no man in his ability. Please hear me, brothers and sisters. No matter how sophisticated you are, there is a limit to your ability. So he empowers you. And I'll tell you why he empowers you. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. When you begin to read from verse 5, Jesus was talking to them. And then they told him, they said, Will you at this time restore the nation of Israel? And he said, It is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the Father has put in his care. Then verse 8 says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be what? One more time. One more time. A witness is one who validates the claims of another. Are we together? A witness is one who proves that the person testifying is not lying. There are many things that God has said in his word and Satan is saying it's a lie. So he empowers you to be a witness. So they see a young man, a young woman, grace upon your life. He has said, I will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten, the palmer worm has eaten. And Satan says it's a lie, it can't happen. So God says, let me use somebody as a specimen. He finds someone that is 10 years backward. And then he tells creation, watch me now. And in five months, he turns that person to a wonder. You know how you prove a mathematical equation and you write QED. Not open to debate anymore. I've proven it. I've said it and I've done it. That's what God is about to do with someone's life. There are many statements that God has said, but Satan is saying it's a lie. Watch what happens to you when his power comes upon your life. Listen, 
the power of the spirit does not throw people down the throwing people down is just the impact of his presence the power of the spirit leads people to unimaginable realms unimaginable dimensions unimaginable dimensions let's look at two scriptures I saw a scripture that really, 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 really blessed me and I thought that we'll just look at it. Second, Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 1. It says, We then, as what? Walkers together with you. Like you are talking to a workforce. There are times that we have the workforce meeting here in the ministry and it's just exclusive for workers. So God is talking here. He said, we then as workers together with Him. Say, I'm a worker together with Him. Say it again, I'm a worker together with Him. When you are a worker with Him, then you will produce extraordinary results. You will produce unusual results. This thing I'm teaching you has no respect for gender. Some of you are sitting looking at me and saying, can God do anything with me? The God of heaven that I know can turn your life around in ways that you will not imagine. Read from Genesis to Revelation. He met ordinary people, turned them around. Ordinary people, turned them around. Ordinary Jesus, turned him around. Ordinary Peter, turned him around. Stamara Moses, turned him around. Young, fearful Joshua, Turn him around. Weak feminist Deborah turn her into a warrior. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. In a few minutes now, we are going to begin to pray, and you will watch him once again in action, doing wonders, changing lives in split seconds. Disease is dissolving. Watch this in split seconds. Deliverance is happening in split seconds. Impartations happening, brothers and sisters. A man cannot bless you like that. Oh, learn this. No, but he will not suffer my food to me, for I carry his presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Say in the name of Jesus From today I walk in the consciousness Of the leadership Of the Holy Spirit I submit To the leadership Of the Holy Spirit I submit to his anointing I will never try to do anything without his anointing without his empowerment without the unction of the spirit together with the Holy Spirit my life becomes an awesome wonder I know some of you think I'm just talking Help that lady under the anointing there, please. I know some of you think I'm just speaking and making noise. No, sir. We are not teaching you cunningly devised fables. That which we have seen. That which we have heard. That which our hands have handled. This is what we bring. The sickness in your body can leave because he is here. You see that? The disease in your life and all these things can leave because he is here. The oppression in your life, the retrogression, 
The mountain that stands before you, you have been staring at it for years. Can you shift back and let your senior partner stare that mountain for you and watch the way he will dissolve it? Your, your calling it a mountain is relative to your perception. Step back and let the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who the mountains keep like lambs before him. Hallelujah. Let's end with this scripture. Daniel 11, verse 32. I have to stop here so we'll pray. Daniel 11. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. He says, but the people that do know their not their neighbor's God but the people that do know their God the first thing that should happen to them is capacity in the spirit and the second thing that happens to them is that they are graced to do exploits listen brothers and sisters this thing is not by might Zechariah chapter 4 give it to us please and verse 6 it is not by might it is not by power it's by the spirit the empowerment of the spirit when you walk with the holy spirit he empowers you to represent him when you walk with the holy spirit he takes away fear from you your life no longer becomes a thing of fear this fear all around is a product of our thinking that all the results will come from us the bible says then he answered and spake unto me this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, unto Joshua Selman, unto Koinonia, saying, not by might. You won't build that house by might. You won't build it by power. No. Your CGPA will not change by might. Not by power. Reducing your prayer time will not change it. Throwing away your good friends will not change it. It is by the Spirit. The next time people ask you, how was this result? By the Spirit by the spirit by the spirit koinonia by the spirit his wisdom upon us by the spirit leadership by the spirit the miracles tonight by the spirit the impartation by the spirit i have learned to walk with him i have learned to walk with him i have learned to walk closely with him he promised me listen the holy spirit never promised me money the Holy Spirit never promised me fame. Listen carefully. The Holy Spirit never promised me title. The Holy Spirit never promised me good clothes. The Holy Spirit never promised me crowds. The Holy Spirit never promised me ministry. But He promised to be a representation of the presence of God. And to empower me continually. The only thing He promised me is still what he is keeping because every other thing the highest value a man can have on earth is to be anointed the highest value you can possess on earth is to sustain an ability to provide solutions that are supernatural Where your word becomes his word. The Holy Spirit has possessed me like a demon. Literally. Every part of me. Every part of me. When I speak, is his voice. When I bless, is his authority. When I command, it is his authority speaking it is based on this consciousness that we can gather people and say come bring your pain bring your burdens bring it there are people here sick there are people here saying apostle can my life change keep watching you are about to watch the biggest drama in your life 
how fast situations can change because of him man of God you need him businessman businesswoman you need him you don't need bottles of minerals you don't need a bigger container you need him and his wisdom are we together now I said it last week the key to walking with him is communion fellowship fellowship whatever you bring to the stage of life is the product of your secret place with him you are not going to stand here and fake relationship with him no sir no sir many people do it and disgrace themselves whatever you bring to the stage of life is an effulgence of your secret place so when I stand here when I'm preparing to go for koinonia I imagine him just waiting happily I know he's here but he's also with me and as I enter while I'm coming those who come usually a protocol person follows me and as soon as we take this turn and I see people they just see me smiling they don't know why I'm smiling when I come here and I sit down here I'm just watching people and watching the testimonies in my mind I look around and sometimes the Lord keeps showing me the visions of people's issues and then I am overjoyed you see me waiting I can't wait for worship team to finish singing do you know why? because I want him to speak to you when he holds this mic through my hands and he speaks to you through my voice and commands situations and circumstances then you will watch them melt away ah. you are amazing you are amazing Hello. you are amazing you are amazing. 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 walk some of you as you are going you will see phone calls that should not enter listen every time you see anything unusual smile back to him and say oh, my partner at work at work Shalabakotaya. my partner at work you go back to that ministry fire on the altar my partner at work you are lying down and sleeping and a dream comes with a powerful idea my partner working while I'm sleeping somebody calls you and says sorry I, I used to walk against you but now I repent someone at the backside has been compelling him are we, are we together do you believe all that I've shared or are you just excited I can't speak how sir the Holy Spirit does not speak English I can't speak Yoruba. I can't speak this. No. No. Apostle, I am so weak. I am, I am like a non-entity. No problem. You are the exact candidate for partnership with him. So that at the end of it, the excellency of power may be of God and not of you. Rise up on your feet. Let's stop here. I want you to lift your voice in one minute and cry passionately and say Holy Spirit more than ever before more than ever before I want to walk with you lift your voice and pray
change our life. Anoint us. Anoint me. Anoint me. Empower my destiny. Anoint me. That's your prayer tonight. Anoint me. Fresh anointing. Fresh fire. I want to walk with you. I want to walk with you. Doing wonders with you. Changing lives with you. Transforming destinies with you. Transforming destinies. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God. I worship Lamb of God I worship you Lamb of God I worship you Lamb of God I worship you Lamb of God, I worship you. For thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory. And the lifter up of my head, regardless of what it has been in my life. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory. And the lifter up of my head, hello, give Madonna. Listen, there is a fresh impartation that is coming upon your life. An impartation is a transference of unction. It's a transference of possibilities. So that what was not in your life, all of a sudden, is activated in your life. What you have no business seeing in your life, steps into your life. And you begin to walk in those dimensions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Alleluia. Alleluia. Please lift your hands. We are going to be fast. Tonight, tonight's session is an impartation. Please, I want you to believe it. I don't know how else to convince you. There are things, graces and dimensions that we need in our lives, but we cannot access in ourselves. But if we believe them, if we believe them, if we believe them, we will see it. Hallelujah. The first impartation God is releasing tonight, and I want you to bring those people out. There is a strange grace I see for speed. And the Lord is saying I should stretch my hands. It's a dimension of the spirit. It's a year of triumph. God is bringing speed. Right now, I stretch my hands. Let it be now, inside and outside. Speed. 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 Inside, outside, everywhere. Speed. Like fire. It's coming on your chest. It's coming on people's chest. I don't know why, but it's coming on people's chest. A strange mantle, great for speed. An impartation of the anointing for speed. It's by the Spirit. It's by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing 27 people climbing ladders in the spirit. Let it be now. Let it be now. Now. The anointing of the spirit is locating those people. It's a new dimension. I'm seeing ascendance in the spirit. People rising. That's what I'm seeing. Rising. Climb that ladder. It's happening to you. There is an energy of the spirit that is taking men to this dimension 27 people inside outside i'm seeing it happen by the spirit men rise into new levels of possibilities we may not have space to bring everybody out but we'll just guide them somewhere rising 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 from one dimension one dimension one dimension I want you to lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. My hands are shaking. And the Lord is telling me that He wants to do an impartation of the healing anointing. Now listen. The healing anointing. Right now, in the name of Jesus. It will come on your hands. It will come on your hands. It will come on your hands. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. The ministry of healing. Not just an emotional ministry. A real dimension. Laying hands on the sick. By the influence of the Holy Ghost. And watching dramatic miracles. 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 I'm under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me I'm under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me yeah. Shadow of your own. your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of your own. There are people here praying, Lord, prove to me that I'm called into the ministry. The Lord is saying, An anointing is coming on you now, as a proof, as I'm speaking. You may not even know. 
But that grace, that grace, that grace is a sign. It's a sign. It's a sign. It's a token. Right now, right now, it's coming on people. A sign. A token. A sign. A token. Many ladies, many ladies are experiencing this sign. A sign, a sign of His hand upon your life. He's giving you a sign beyond any shadow of doubt. I'm hearing in my spirit the spirit of wisdom the spirit of wisdom the spirit of wisdom the Lord is asking me to count four one two three four take it now let it be yours strength wisdom I'm seeing mantles falling mantles falling strength wisdom coming from heaven strength wisdom coming from heaven receive it right now supernatural wisdom supernatural wisdom supernatural wisdom hallelujah the Lord is showing me somebody who used to have dreams and everything you see will come to pass but he stopped right now I'm seeing a grace for restoration coming upon you right now in the name of Jesus it's not a general prophecy there are exact people that this is happening to a restoration a restoration a restoration a restoration a restoration Hallelujah. There is a grace. I feel like praying for students. There is a grace for academic excellence. Listen, it doesn't just happen. Believe me. It's not just about what you learn. There is a grace. There is a, an exact grace for this. Lord, I pray right now in the name that is above all names. I stretch my hands to your people. As many, O oh God, as will please you, let this baptism of this unction for extraordinary understanding, let it come upon them right now. At the count of three, receive it now. One, two, three. Take it now. Please help them. Receive that grace right now. It's coming upon you. Extraordinary intelligence, capacity to assimilate. Capacity to understand. Capacity to understand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That fair lady that shared her testimony, lift your hands. I see an angel pouring something like fire on your head. Father, in the name of Jesus, let us step into a level of extraordinary intelligence. I don't know you, but I release that grace upon you. From today, you a strange dimension of grace and intelligence. In the name of Jesus, receive it right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive it right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. There is a grace for entrepreneurship. Creativity witty inventions in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing at least 43 people right now in the name of jesus i stretch my hands let it come on them oh god believe it let it come on them oh god let it come on them oh god in the name of jesus let it come on them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. 
Let it come on them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands now. 43. I'm seeing a number 43. Strange ideas coming on your spirit now. Strange ideas. Creative ideas. Strange ideas. Creative ideas. Receive it right now. I want to pray for those in ministry. There is always an unction for the next dimension. I don't know where you are. But you are going to begin to feel fire from your feet. Rising upwards. That's the instruction God is giving me. In the name of Jesus. Lord I am praying right now. Fresh fire. Fresh mantle. Let it begin to arise now. You are in ministry in this place. Begin to receive it right now. In the name of Jesus. Receive it right now. In the name of Jesus. Receive it right now. Those in ministry help them. Sheparo dosto koto baria. Lekete koto so presh kalabariata. Zabrate so so presh kotos. Strange fire. I see strange fire rising from the feet. Rise on top from the feet. Rise on top from the feet. Please help them. In the name of Jesus. Can you carry the child so that he doesn't? In the name of Jesus. Strange fire. Revival fire, supernatural unction, supernatural unction, supernatural unction, supernatural unction. Hallelujah. The Lord is ministering to me about a group of people here that He wants to bring into intimacy with Him. There is a dimension of intimacy. It will surprise you. You will start finding out that you are going alone to go and sit in a place. The Holy Spirit wants to reintroduce Himself to certain people. Lord, where are they? Where are they? Find them. Find them tonight. Find rest in them. Where are these men and women? Where are these men and women that you want to introduce yourself to? Shake it, take it, beyond church. Beyond church. Beyond church. Arado Supragadiza la Curiata. Hallelujah. Ah! I'm seeing people here who will be burning for days like fire, literal physical fire. That will not stop. You will go with it. You will wake up with it. It will continue. There is an energizing of the spirit. That is happening to people. An energizing of the spirit. Happening to people. It's a fresh fire. It's a fresh fire. Hallelujah. If you came with anything that is a point of contact. Whether a document, certificate, whatever it is that is a point of contact, whether you are inside or outside, anything you can use, I want you to lift it up. So many things are happening to people in the realm of the spirit. There's someone at the media stand. The Lord is lifting that person to the next level. I'm seeing someone in a vision down at the media stand. Stepping up. Let them enter, oh God. Right now. Let them enter into that realm. That dimension. Somebody at the media stand. The Lord is it's like an initiation into a dimension. Into a dimension. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 19 says, Handkerchiefs and aprons. Handkerchiefs and aprons. I've explained to you the mystery behind these results. No man can speak over your life and you just have results like that. It, it doesn't happen that way. I'm about to speak over your points of contact. If you don't have anything, you are the point of contact yourself. Are we together? Many of you will be surprised. Believe me. Believe me. Many of you will be surprised at the dramatic things that will happen. 
We are talking about the Holy Spirit here. We are not just talking about an anointed man. We are talking about the Holy Spirit. His anointing like a cloud comes to mantle certain aspects of your life. And you see grace speaking for you. Grace speaking for you. Lift it up. You can lift your hands. Ready to speak now. In the name that is above all names, I prophesy upon every point of contact you are using now. Let a a grace, the power of performance that makes things to work. I release it right now upon that instrument. I release it upon your documents. I release it upon your pictures. I release it upon your certificates. I release it upon your proposals. Hear me. Whatever you are agreeing for as a point of contact, I give life to it now in the name of Jesus Christ and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit a dimension of results you have never seen begin to see it now I speak to every CGPA that is down here hear my voice I speak as one sent by the Lord I command you to arise now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ there are people who are supposed to graduate but as it is now it looks like they may not graduate I change it now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I decree and declare where your helpers have passed you and ignored you I put an anointing on you that will compel them to bless you I put an anointing on you that will compel them to bless you. Listen. Everything that used to flow in your life and stopped mysteriously, I opened the door for it to continue. Everyone here in business, any kind of godly business, I stretch my hands. Enter a level of rest now. Believe what I'm praying for you. I bring you into a dimension of rest now. Every troubled family here, all kinds of troubles from lack of finances to trouble, to fight, to quarrel, in the name of Jesus, I introduce an anointing to that family. And I command, let there be peace right now. 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 Every troubled family. Let there be peace right now. There are people here who need divine direction as a matter of urgency. I speak to you. Hear his voice and hear it clear. Hear his voice and hear it clear. Hear his voice and hear it clear. Hear hear it clear. In the name of Jesus Christ. In dreams and visions, may his will be made known to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command every manifestation of the spirit of fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of the future. Uncertainties around your life. That is making you do foolish things. I command right now. Fear. Go in the name of Jesus. Fear, go in the name of Jesus. 
fear go in the name of Jesus fear go in the name of Jesus every veil of disfavor that is around your life that makes things to work for others until it gets to your turn and then mysteriously when the breakthrough is almost coming you never see it i decree and declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, I command that captivity to end now. I command that captivity to end now. Hear me. Everyone called jobless here. I stand in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. I decree and declare. May your miracle job find you. Believe what you are hearing. May your miracle job find you. In the name of Jesus. Now I pray for anyone here having any infirmity. I don't care what it is. I don't care how long. Any stranger in your body. A lady is going to shout now under the anointing. And then the power of God for healing will touch people. In the name of Jesus, I command be healed now. Say amen. Be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. Every blood disease be healed now. Ulcers be healed now. Migraines be healed now. Every kind of abnormal condition in your body be healed now. Growths and lumps around the body, whether breast lumps, all kinds of lumps, I command that they disappear right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your family. In the name of Jesus, between now and the next seven days, may you hear strange testimonies from home. Please believe me. I say it again between now and the next seven days. I stand in the name of the Lord God of heaven and I command in the next seven days unusual testimonies, unusual testimonies, unusual testimonies, unusual testimonies, unusual testimonies. Testimony. It doesn't take time. It takes his anointing. Everything that your hands have done and it did not work. I stretch my hands to yours and I command from today become a proof producer. I command today become a result producer. Become a result producer. Become a proof producer. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. Every pending issue over your life. Every pending issue. Any kind of pending issue. Right now. Issues that have been hanging in the realm of the spirit. And will not be resolved. Shekotos kapreas kata. Shabele kete se I decree and declare let an end come to those issues now let an end come to those issues now let an end come to those issues now every family here that has experienced delay as a family not an individual alone shake it out here there is unction upon me the hand of God is upon me. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. The Lord is asking me to push families forward. I push you forward now. 
by the mystery of prophecy I push you forward now I push you forward now hear me in the name of Jesus Christ whoever must show up in your life and lift you and lift your mother and lift your father and wipe your tears in the name of Jesus I stand by the God of heaven whose I am and I decree and declare that between now and the next two weeks strange encounters strange encounters strange encounters with the gift of men strange encounters strange encounters mysterious coincidences that will lead to your breakthrough everything that has died in your hands and in your life hear the word of the Lord I command it to come back to life now I want to pray please drop your hands just the brothers lift your hands I want to release upon you grace for establishment listen if you are wise you will pay attention to what I'm saying there is a grace that establishes men are we together now establishment is where you gain stability in life financially are we together relationally spiritually purposefully there are many men many church brothers the reason why many people are not in relationships the reason why many people cannot move forward in their life is because the devil has taken this aspect out of their lives so you find a godly brother but you are 35 years you are still begging for money you are still living in your parents house it's a cost lift your hands in the name of Jesus I pray for every brother here the grace and the unction that turns weak men into great men the grace and the unction that establishes men financially ministerially career wise and in purpose at the count of three in the name of Jesus Christ whose I am and whom I serve I decree and declare may that grace come upon you now one Two, three, take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Upon you, I command that grace. There is a gentleman outside. That grace is coming upon him in a mighty way. Take that grace right now. Brothers, receive it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. It is this grace that brings speed of establishment in your life help us come to support you to gain your footing in life it's not just by growing old there is a grace you don't have to pay for everything by yourself there is a grace that sends help us to your life to your ministry establishment is a mystery in the spirit you can have a thing but when you are established you are, you are well stabilized enough to now begin to be a blessing to others there are many people who are experiencing finances here but they are not established you are established means you can bless others without being affected established in wisdom your mind is developed so that you no longer act like a child two more prayers and we are done tonight The Lord is ministering to me. The Lord is ministering to me that He wants to take away barrenness. 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 It doesn't just mean physical barrenness alone. Unproductivity is a cause. It's the cause of hardship. The classic sign that a man is carrying that demonic thing is barrenness. In the name of Jesus, I command your desert to become a fruitful vine. In the name of Jesus, 
I command your fruitful vine to become a forest. I say it again in the name of Jesus. I command your desert to be a fruitful vine. I command your desert to be a fruitful vine. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In one minute, I want you to ask the Lord for any one thing. I'm releasing my faith with you. Just one thing. Lift your voice and pray. I'm releasing my faith with you. Please pray. One minute. Ask the Lord and watch it happen. I release my faith with you. In the name of Jesus. I release my faith with you. Ask the Lord. Don't say it is impossible. We are talking about the God of heaven here. We are talking about the spirit of the living God. What you see is the ministry of the spirit. The ministry of the spirit. Ask what you will. And it be granted unto you by the spirit of God. Are you praying? Just one thing. Change my life. Just one thing. Give me laughter. Just one thing. Answer my marriage. Just one thing. Give me a child. Just one thing. Settle me financially. Just one thing. Multiply your grace on my life. Hallelujah. Whatever it is that you have asked the Lord, I release my faith with you and I call it your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release my faith with you and I call it your testimony. Listen, the Bible says, and whatsoever Adam called it, that was the name thereof. If it is called a testimony, then it becomes a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, no matter how impossible it is, may the God of all flesh, the God of Jeshurun, that rides upon the wings of the wind, I pray that he will step into your life and give you dramatic testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Listen, as you go back this night, don't be careless. Meditate. Meditate on the things you have received and begin to walk conscious of it. Do you know many of you as a result of today's meeting, you will literally start feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit like a presence walking. Literally. Literally. I mean what I'm saying. Literally walking like someone walking. You enter a room. Some of you, you will feel it as wind. Some of you, you will see that shadow. A similitude of His presence. You will begin to have encounters. Not demonic encounters. Encounters with His presence. You will be sleeping. Hear me? You will be sleeping and you will feel a physical touch. A man will wake you. You will be alone in the room. Yet you will hear a voice. Clear. A real voice. You will know that this is the Spirit of God leading you. In the name of Jesus. I activate that dimension. Begin to walk in the impulses of the Spirit. The voice of the Spirit. The touch of the Spirit. The feelings of the Spirit. I program your spirit man to understand the impulses of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. He will come to you. He will come to you. He will open your Bible when you are sleeping. You will wake up and see your Bible open. He will write notes and leave it physical notes on paper. You will see it happen. You will pray and he will come to your room. Like Benny Hinn, it will be good morning, Holy Spirit. You will have similitudes of encounters with him. You will sleep in the night. And your whole night will be full of visions, 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 encounters, visions, encounters, visions. Hear me? Men will come and sit on your bed and start shaking under the anointing. Because something, a deposit of eternity has followed you. They will wear your clothes 
and the mantle will catch up with them they will wear your shoes they will eat in your place and you will carry strange fire in the name of Jesus you will hear men call you and confess and tell you I'm sorry I'm the one who stole your laptop I'm sorry I'm the one who took this from you I'm sorry because of the presence of God listen by this new dimension of encounter I command that you become untouchable untouchable by witches and wizards untouchable by accidents untouchable by bomb blast untouchable by armed robbers in the name of Jesus hear me quarter to shame your senior partner will arise for you no longer will people say where is your God your life will be an answer to that prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ listen there are some of you here what has happened to you tonight it will last for a long time the word of God the Bible will open to you in a fresh way a way that you have never seen it a dimension that you have never seen hear me some of you after tonight God will start giving you instructions to go and pray for certain people don't be afraid you will go and you will watch miracles erupt signs and wonders erupt in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah father I ask finally that everyone following online everyone following here inside and in any of the overflows everything that has made men mock God in your life I am agreeing with you from the depth of my heart I give you the next 13 days surprise them surprise them with the enviable results that will come from your life surprise your accusers surprise everyone who knew you in the name of Jesus wave your hands to Jesus listen this is how men are made in the kingdom products of transfers spiritual transfers spiritual deposits something that was not in your life coming upon your life and creating a scene in your life that was not there never act like you don't know how it came it's by the spirit fellowship with the spirit fellowship with the spirit pray in the spirit and then you walk in those dimensions hallelujah thank you Jesus for that which you have done tonight much more than this teaching so God invade the life of your people and cause them to know you in the name of Jesus Christ keep standing if you can very quickly there are people here your first encounter with the Holy Spirit tonight is as a convictor he's convicting you of sin of righteousness and of judgment there are people here who listening to me overflow one two three online and right here there are people here who are saying man of God I don't like the way my life is and I want to come to Jesus I want to run to him I want to start afresh please pay attention don't be busy let me have your attention this is a very important call there are others who are saying man of God I have responded to an altar call before but now I need to start afresh with God I don't know how things went haywire in my life but right now I'm running to him in the next two minutes if you belong to any of these categories the Holy Spirit is already convicting you I want you to run whether you are inside or outside run quickly come and stand here quickly the Holy Spirit is calling you are you coming quickly Koinonia celebrate them if you are outside run 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 
follow any of the doors and make your way inside quickly I didn't say walk please run our time is gone run like you are coming to receive an award run like your life is about to change don't be embarrassed don't be ashamed he's giving you a new beginning don't say they know me that's nobody's business this is an affair between you and the lover of your soul there are still more people to come are you ashamed or are you rushing to come are you ashamed or are you rushing to come don't act like you're not hearing his voice those outside make your way quickly quickly make your way join them if you're coming those of us here i salute you some of you are making this decision for the first time some of you have made this decision before and your life just scattered and you are getting back to him it doesn't matter what category if you are joining them please help this our mother she's joining them make your way quickly it doesn't matter what you have done he's giving you a new beginning when you stand here lift your right hand and say it sincerely and truthfully make sure that you are making a decision that is genuine not just an emotional decision say after me lord jesus i love you and i believe in you tonight i have heard your word i need the holy spirit in my life i ask you jesus to forgive me to cleanse me give me a new beginning from today I declare that my sins are forgiven. I declare that the life of God is in me. I'm a child of God. The Holy Spirit lives in me. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you preserve these ones. I decree and declare that guilt leaves your life. I decree and declare that condemnation leaves your life. From today, the Lord gives you a new beginning. I supply grace for you. To live a victorious Christian life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Now I want you to follow the lady waving her hands. You are quite many. Just coordinate yourselves. And quickly follow that lady. That would have a word or two with you outside. And require that you, um, you just do one or two things. Your life will change forever in Jesus name. Koinonia, let's honor God for them. have been blessed by this message. For additional information, you can visit us on Facebook on www.facebook.com slash Koinonia Parenting Network International or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash Koinonia underscore KNI. You can also download our messages on www.foreshared.com Parenting Network International, the protection of the owners of God's life and death.